Welcome, I'm Michael Baker. Thanks for joining me today as we explore concepts with the objective of improving your management skills and growing your business. Make sure you have your notepads and your pen handy because I want you to take notes. I want you to make a commitment to yourself that you will jot down some sort of action item that you can implement in your business today. That's what this is all about, implementation to drive your business forward. And I think we have a concept to cover today that will help you today become more effective as a manager and therefore or you will drive your business forward. And this is something that you can apply to the smallest task, the smallest little thing that's on your plate, or to those greatest production methods and methodologies and uh, production lines that you have in your business that produce your products and services. So I'm going to use a small example of how you might implement this, and I'm gonna use a large example as well. I can tell you this, I hate receipts. I hate scanning receipts. I hate paper in general. And we, you know, require our accounting department wants to make sure, of course, that they reconcile all expenses and they have to have backup. And, you know, if there was ever an audit or something like that, we need to have a a copy of all of our receipts. So it's imperative that I keep all that stuff. And I like to be organized. I just don't like the tedious nature of scanning things and organizing it. So what we're going to talk about today is this idea of what I've referred to as batch work. I mean, it's not like I created that that concept or that name, but I'm not sure there's probably another name that you may uh, relate to this, and that is to do things in and take advantage of volume production. So in my example of receipts, I hate scanning receipts, and you might think, Okay, well, if just every time you have one, you scan the receipt real quick, it just takes a few seconds and you file that in the cloud or wherever, maybe on a local server, wherever you're going to do that, it only takes a few seconds and it's not a big deal. And I understand that sort of mindset, but the idea of batch work is to take advantage of some inherent properties of volume production to making things that much more efficient and eliminating waste. So what I've done with receipts is I just collect them in one central location and then as much as I hate it, occasionally I will then go and I will scan everything. And it's not always receipts. Sometimes there's other documents, sometimes there's snail mail and there's copies of other kinds of records or documents that I need to file those away as well. And what happens in doing this, even though it's a much bigger project, instead of doing something that may have taken a few seconds, this may now take 10 or 15 minutes, even a half an hour of working at this, and it's stuff that I don't like, but still what happens inevitably is that it becomes more streamlined. Something occurs to me about how to do this more efficiently. And so some of the the things that I can just think of that I've implemented on a very small scale. In today's homework, I want you to pick something very small in your business. Maybe it's something, a task that's on your plate, something very small that you do regularly and try to assign some volume production, some batch work methodology to it and see what you might be able to improve. So my scanner and most scanners I think are like this will give you an option of a default folder on your local hard drive on your computer to which it will save the scanned items and when i first had the scanner i didn't really look at that i would uh, be scanning different things because i was doing that one off situation and if there was a document different than a receipt or if it was a personal receipt versus a business receipt and everything there were different folders that i would want to store the things in. And so I never took the time to set up the defaults. And you, some um, scanners may even have the ability to have favorites or multiple folders that you can go to in some sort of organization. But when you have to do this in bulk work, you're gonna take the time, the few seconds that it takes to set up a setting like that on your scanner and therefore what you can do like let's say there's a particular folder that you're using for all of your current year 
uh, expenses for your business, you would scan all those receipts and they would automatically all go to that folder. Then you could change the folder at once. And so what happens for, for, the, for your next one, say the next thing you were gonna do is you're gonna scan all your personal receipts, then you would have the default folder be something else. And what you're eliminating is the various, you know, is really small. It's really small what you're eliminating the waste, but it is wasteful to be jumping back and forth between folders every time you do this. So you're shaving off a few seconds of navigating where this is being saved every time. So that's just one example. Another example to this process is you might be like, well, when I go and do this in batch work, I like it to all be organized. Therefore, instead of putting everything in one central location, I'm going to actually have the, the trays, you know, the trays on the desk or on the bookshelf or whatever. And while you are placing receipts, as you get them, you'll put them into their respective trays so that when you go to do the scanning, it's all you know, already sorted and it doesn't take any time to do that. And that'll save you the time in the batch work. It's just this intolerance that you build up for the inefficiency that naturally makes you become more efficient. I want you to think of any job that you have in your life, anything that you have to do more than just once, you will naturally improve the process. You will naturally become more streamlined, more efficient because you will eliminate waste. You'll become frustrated or intolerant of those things that slow, slow the thing down. If you do things once and once only, it's not that big a deal. Maybe you even come close to, you know, skinning your knuckle or it's you're lifting in a dangerous way over your head or you are um, going somewhere where it's a little dusty. There's something about it that isn't ideal, but you're, do you're doing it only once so that uh, that uh, situation, that condition that is not ideal doesn't really bother you that much. So you tolerate it and you never fix that condition. But when you do things in volume, if you had to do that same task a hundred or a thousand times or even 10 times instead of once, you'd be like, well, I'm not going to wreck my knuckles, skin in my knuckles all up here. So I think I'm going to wear gloves while I do this 10 or 20 times. And, you know, I don't like getting dirty when I go into this dusty location that I noticed. So since I'm going to be doing this several times, I'm going to clean this location. See our video on 5S and the benefits associated with cleanliness in your area. Or I really don't like the way that my shoulder begins to feel when I have to stretch and reach to do this item. So uh, I'm afraid that over time there might be some sort of repetitive injury. So I'm going to bring that box down lower, whatever the situation happens to be. What we do naturally, it just occurs to us, if we've got to do something in volume, is we automatically assign more efficiency to it. We think of a better way, and it's due to our intolerance of those things that frustrate us or maybe endanger us or aggravate us in some way. They, they cause a little bit of pain or, uh, you know, uh, aggravation, and we automatically fix them. Going back to my scanner example, well, when I purchased a scanner for the company, I decided to purchase one that could handle a great deal of speed and volume, but I never really took advantage of that aspect of the equipment because I was doing things in small, you know, one-off receipts uh, scanning once in a while. Once you do things in batch work, now you can take advantage of the power of the equipment. So, you know, even something as small as turning the power on, it takes a few seconds and then, you know, the computer does that thing. There's a little bit of calibrating that seems to go on in the scanner that we're just talking about a few seconds here. But if you do that once, now the scanner is ready to go and you don't have to, when you multiply that, if you were doing that several times throughout the week or throughout a month or throughout a year, that adds up. And so uh, this higher volume scanner, now what I can do is I can stack a whole bunch of things together and I can fire them through. And then what that caused me to do is realize, okay, well, even though if I'm creating as an example, a PDF document, I can name these things and label them separately. And now you can take advantage of some copy and paste features in your computer. And 
there's just a whole bunch of different ways that you will be able to associate some sort of improvement, some perpetual refinement. And that's what we want you to be doing here. So consider batch work. Now, I gave you that small example. In our business, BMI, Bicker Management, actually, uh, our customers are other businesses. That is, the demands for the products and services that our clients request of us can come in in an uneven nature and create you know, a variety of different capacity issues and uh, demands. And, and we have to look at how the flow of work goes through the production and the logistics. And in the Toyota way, in the Toyota production system, they refer to something that we would uh, translate to load leveling. They refer to that as hijunka. And there is, you know, uh, a real strain on your business if it's feast or famine and you're coming in in peaks and valleys in terms of demand. So you need to find ways to deal with this. And batch work is one of those ways of doing it. And right now, today I'm focused more on not when your capacities are being strained and you're going over uh, capacity and what to do because anytime demand is going to exceed your capacities you're going to lose business and that threatens your market share and so on but we're not going to get into that in great deal detail today instead I want you to focus on the opposite where there's those valleys where there's the troughs and you don't have a lot of work should you be doing it what we do a lot of is we create automations and you know push notifications, alerts, all sorts of things to try to streamline and automate processes. The disadvantage of doing that, if you look at it on a very superficial level, is that you get notifications sent and demand requests. So for the, for the example I'm using, if a customer requests something, let's say in marketing, and we have to create and manage a piece of content for social media, that is going to hopefully lead to conversion of leads and revenue and so on. One of the early parts of an automation might be that a customer would fill out a form and request something. So they would input something, some kind of topic, here's something I would like, some content to go out in social media. And then that would alert somebody on our marketing team to get started on that. The disadvantage to automation is that the request could be very, very small, just a one-off and then that stimulates the automation and all of a sudden you trigger a process and we go through the logistics and, and the wheels are in motion. So this happens in your business anytime a customer reaches out and asks you for something. So it doesn't matter what it is that you are selling, whatever product or service, what I'm encouraging you to do today is consider batch work and don't respond automatically. Don't have a reflex that every time you get a demand, you produce as fast as possible. Now that may be necessary depending on your type of business. And I understand the constituents of value, one of them is customer experience and, and convenience is the other, is another. And so if the value that uh, your customer was going to experience is really going to be dependent on how fast the turnaround between the time they initiate the request for your product or service and they receive it, often that is the case, then I can appreciate where you're going to want to um, try to respond immediately. But often there are these situations where we can manage the expectation of the client and we can build a buffer, a bit of a hopper. So what you do, and again, I'm speaking in general terms because all of you have different types of business and how you do this. What you want to do and what I recommend to my team is let's have sort of an either or situation set up in terms of the algorithm, in terms of the formula for the automation that we're going to follow. Is that every day or maybe every two hours or it could be every two weeks depending on your production uh, cycle and how quickly things operate in your environment. It's either a length of time passes or a certain amount of requests make it into the hopper. Whichever comes first initiates the alert to the first person in the chain, in the logistics chain. And so let's say in my example of creating a piece of content, somebody puts something in and they, in the form, they may have said, well, I'm hoping that this is going to be produced by next week, or they might say, or you might define that. You might say, please put in your requests for next month, put in all your suggestions, and you can help to define those processes for your customers. And as those inputs come in, now the person 
can wait until they get an alert that says you now have five requests or you now have 50 or you have a thousand requests for the following and now it makes sense to go into full production and i hope you can understand this that it it, it makes a lot of difference depending on what kind of business you're in uh, some of you produce a particular product that it doesn't make sense to produce unless you can produce at least a thousand of them at one time or a hundred of them. And some of you are like, no, I, I can produce, produce one-offs each and every time. This concept of batch work, you need to look at this and control this in your production, in your logistics. And that was just one example, create a hopper. So when I was giving um, advice to people on the team of what they might do, because there was inefficiency built in to responding to every request, that was the first thing I said is, okay, well, let's strategize and create uh, a system, some sort of hopper in, in terms of hijunka, let's load level, let's make sure that enough are in the pipe built up before the alert happens. And then let's add a second condition to our algorithm, to our formula that says, unless this amount of time has passed, and then the alert comes in and says, well, we have at least one request or, or whatever it may be. So what I'm saying is you need to take a look at the mechanisms through which you communicate the requests, the inputs, the stimuli that make you go forward in your logistics process and then create some sort of buffer zone, a hopper I'm calling it, that has an automated emptying mechanism to it. So it fills up and it tr sort of pictured regardless of maybe you have a business like mine where you're producing a service and it's not an actual piece of equipment. This is happening. Uh, what I'm describing to you is, is happening largely in a virtual environment. And but a picture a piece of equipment where the production facility is, you know, maybe a conveyor belt is loading things into this hopper and then eventually a certain weight happens and uh, the bottom gives way and all of what's been in that hopper that built up demand goes into the next phase of production. So that's what I'm recommending here because then go back to my example about scanning is what volume production is going to do. It's going to give us an economy of scale and it's going to force us to become better when we have to do things one at a time, we tend to be tolerant of inefficiencies. But when we have to do things in volume, we automatically streamline. We automatically are intolerant of inefficiencies and we start to reduce waste. It becomes much more apparent, much more visible. The other part of this is that you want to avoid the tyranny of the urgent. You want to avoid this Pavlovian response where you become conditioned to respond every time you have a stimulus. And that's what I had in this discussion that I had of our production facility is I do not want any individual team member being triggered with an alert every time a request comes in because it's a little bit desensitizing. First of all, I don't want that distraction. It's like when you multitask and somebody comes in and they distract you and you're, you're busy doing something else. If you were really in the zone, streamlined and really doing something very efficiently and someone came in and said, oh, I just need your help for 10 seconds here, you can understand that you wouldn't want to stop the line, so to speak. You wouldn't want to, you know, remove uh, your protective equipment, shut off any pieces of uh, equipment that you were using and everything to go help someone for 10 seconds and then come back to this and everything's got to warm up again or whatever. Now, I'm using these things as metaphors. It may not be literally a piece of equipment, but the same thing happens. These distractions, you don't want those things to occur. And so that's where uh, I want you to be very careful and try to exercise batch work. When you use automations to notify people, what happens is they get responded. Maybe your notification is on your mobile phone, you get a, a vibration or a chime of some sort, or there's an alert on your computer, whatever it happens to be, it's a distraction when it comes in. So instead, what you do is use batch work again. Think about um, your inbox, the tyranny of the urgent of the inbox is so common, like every time you get an email, you reply to it. That's a, a bad way. That's ineffective management of your email communications. And the same thing happens with all other things in your production methods. So think about this stuff and don't allow yourself to become conditioned to always responding to those things because that is going to make you inefficient. So I'll just quickly give you some advice of how I do this, generally speaking. How will I do 
uh, apply what I'm recommending to you on a practical basis. The first thing I would recommend you do is you observe the process. So maybe it's uh, it's a process that you're going through, then I'll just document it, sort of take note and be very mindful of what you're doing while you're going through it. But ideally, maybe this is something that your team is doing. This could be a big thing and have major impact on your business that you're watching the production facility. Observe it and document the process. You've probably done that many times. Uh, you, what you're going to find, first of all, when you Genji Genbutsu, when you go and see, you're going to find that some things are not being done the way you expect them to be done or the way that you train somebody to do them. And to the, de- uh, to the degree that they are doing it even better, that may be a good thing, but go and see. Try to observe and then document things. And once I document a process, and because so much of what we do occurs in our business on the computer, we record things on the screen. We will do a a video capture, screen capture of a process taking place, and maybe the person narrates what they're doing, something like this, or they go back later and they explain it and show it. By going through that process, and I observe that, I witness some inefficiency that may not occur to the person who's doing it because what happens often the person who's actually engaging in the process they get used to doing things a certain way so i know i said earlier that you become intolerant of inefficiencies but the other thing that can also happen and i don't want to sound like i'm talking out both sides of my mouth but this you can appreciate both things can happen the other thing that can happen is that you become sort of desensitized or immune to noticing. You become blind to inefficiencies and a third party observer can look, especially if you have some sort of training in this and if this is what you're looking for. It's the same thing when you're looking uh, like introspection and you're looking at your own process. If you're not going out of your way to be critical of it, you're not trying to find efficiencies, you're unlikely to find those. You'll just go about doing things the way you always have. So document the process, observe, and then start looking for inefficiencies and start with the eight forms of muda, the waste. And uh, if you need to watch our video on that, do so before you do this. And then start making notes of everything you notice that is slowing things down. Or if you have any questions, why is this happening the way it is? That looks inefficient. That looks wasteful. Document all these things and then discuss them with the people who are involved and do it in a very... Um, open way you know there's no criticism it's just we're collaborating to try to streamline things and we're trying to make their lives easier we want them to work smarter not harder and we want to make sure we avoid injury and uh, we want to make sure that we get everything the production going as smooth as possible so you observe you document and then you communicate with everybody and measure time things see literally how long it takes to do a particular task and then do it again and see if you can do it faster there's that opening scene in the movie castaway and in that movie tom hanks character i forget the name of the character works for fedex And there's that opening scene, I think it's in Russia, and they're timing how long it takes for a particular package. And I've seen some other actual real life examples of Toyota doing this, where they're timing a particular process, and you do it again and again, and you see how much you can drive down the time that it gets more and more efficient. Don't be stressful about this. Just, you know, make, have some fun with it and see if what you're doing, if the improvement initiatives that you apply if they're actually going in the right direction are they removing waste you will find you can make huge improvements i want to let you know that clicks like let's say you operate in a lot of virtual environment each extra additional click is time and that would be in terms of muda that would be defined as motion so there's extra motion involved all those extra clicks so i like to see how many clicks we can minimize and can we apply any kind of algorithm or a macro any kind of automation that eliminates that kind of stuff what about templates and uh, you know form letters these types of things that can be created so that you're not retyping things over and over all those types of things you will be able to apply and today's video wasn't meant to discuss you know all the different types of of improvement that you can uh, apply it's meant for you to buy into the concept of batch work and volume production inherently making you intolerant of wasteful or inefficient operations and therefore if you find yourself either personally individually or as an organization 
doing recurring tasks on a one-off basis, you're not taking advantage of economies of scale. Try to do it more in batch work. Try to take advantage of volume production and see how you can become more efficient doing it like that. Now, having said that today's video isn't about providing specific examples of how you can streamline things, I'm more than willing to do that for you if you want to comment and ask me, okay, well, I do enter a lot of data into the computer and you're say unfamiliar with uh, robotic process automations and you don't know how to exercise or uh, implement macros or any kind of automations i'm more than willing to get into that kind of stuff but because there's a variety of viewers and i don't want you to think of this concept as being only applicable to individual tasks or to big production lines. This is applicable to anything. So I'm more reluctant to give a whole bunch of suggestions for improvement. But if you want to know something more specific, you want me to cover something in greater detail, then reach out to me and let me know. There's either a, a link in the description in which you can do this on a more anonymous basis, or you can leave a comment and when you do leave a comment and you push back on it or you give some suggestions and you ask some questions, then everybody learns from that. And that's a good thing because we need to learn from one another. Perpetual refinement.